There came a day when I realized my neighbor's bird would never fly. It lives in an eternity of constriction, broken only by snatches of occasional flights in its little bamboo cage. I remember asking my neighbor about it. Surely it is not possible to remain sane knowing that you have denied a bird a flight. I was told that caged beauty is still beauty. That sometimes, confinement is a sort of wild beauty. If we are all little birds, surely it would validate our existence to be able to be admired by others. Growing up, I have never been a huge part of your life, but you were ultimately still the ballast of my childhood. Seven years ago, when you passed on, I realized we were sinking to quiet. The certain parts of my identity had not changed because of your absence. This epiphany carried with it a gravitational weight I could hardly accept at fifteen. You were always a weightless presence, so light it weighed me down. This emptiness does not suggest blank space, but resonates in absence so painful it belows and fills up the entire room. As a child, I often hid underneath a bed and listened to the dusty heartbeats of this house. There is a rhythm in the patter of feet in the apartment above ours, the scrape of chairs against tiles, and a pulse in the silence that swells up between the sheets you hang on the clothesline. There, beneath a bed, I passed my quietest moments, where above the raw blood in my ears, I learned to listen. In my dreams, I am always looking for you, but you are never found, because I always wake up. We are at a traffic junction. The traffic lights are stuck at the flashing green man, blinking on and off like a joke that no one understands. For a long while, no one spoke. We let the silence drown us. In my dreams, there are always people spilling out of the buildings like mercury. In each of the hands, they were holding on to a single balloon in a universe of colors. I let the crowd swallow me and watch the balloons blot out the sky and filter the sunlight into a thousand different epiphanies of color. And then I saw you, you with your balloon. A navy blue so heavy with solemnity, like the back of a lawless eel. Little sunlight sifted into your hair and slowly tangled down your collar, slipping into your eyes such that you had to blink a few times before squinting off into the horizon. After a long while, you said, "I'm finally free, aren't I?" And suddenly I understood that this was neither a question nor a statement, merely a string of words left to hang empty in the air, like time. When I was a child. I like to imagine you as a little bird, trapped in the pregnant moments of still silence before the seven a.m. alarm goes off. You would sit by the window and stare across the distant morning traffic, as if hoping you had wings to take you away from home. In some dreams, I am standing in the middle of a big green field with you. You were in the sunlight that sifted between my hair. And in the wind that took my breath away, you were also in my hands, patient and silent. You were so light; it took everything I had to keep you down on earth. Last night, I dreamed of you again. This time, there was no wind and no sunlight, just you and me in the middle of a big green field. There was no more fighting between gravity and helium. You were as you always were, so light. It weighed me down, so I released you. In that dream, 
I let you go.